As the start of the Sixers vs. Knicks playoff series inches closer and the anticipation continues to build, Paul Reed has just provided the New York Knicks with a little bit more bulletin board material than he probably should. He joined the Run It Back show on FanDuel Sportsbook Nation where he talked with Chandler Parsons, Sham Sharani, and Michelle Beadle and had some interesting quotes to say, to say the least. Now, I am a little bit tired of B-Ball Paul writing some checks that Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey have to cash, but I do want to give him a little bit of credit that this isn't as bad as it seems. And to give the official quote that went viral here on NBA Central, Paul Reed says he wanted to play the Knicks instead of the Celtics. Quote, we wanted the Knicks matchup. That's the easier team. Now, to start with, this is another example of just B-Ball Paul being B-Ball Paul. That this was not something that he set out saying, I want to disrespect the New York Knicks. I'm going to say something to get people riled up. Just kind of slipped out. And he's done this quite a few times this season. That to give another example, before they play the Lakers this year, Paul Reed had the quote, Quote, he's a big flopper, so make sure that I don't get into foul trouble early. Can't be too aggressive with him. You know, he's going to be flailing, so got to make sure that I stay out of foul trouble. Paul Reed on the keys to matching up with Anthony Davis. And again, Paul Reed had to apologize for this after the game. This was something that it's just Paul Reed being Paul Reed, that sometimes his mouth works a little quicker than his brain, and he gets himself into trouble because of this. Now, with this specific quote regarding the New York Knicks, it is a little worse when it's chopped up like that than what was actually said. The question was asked about the motivation between beyond behind winning that playing game and the matchups between the Knicks and the Celtics. And Paul Reed started off saying, we're not ducking any smoke, we'll play anyone. But yeah, we wanted to play the Knicks and then followed it up with, that's the easier team. Now for starters, he's not lying that if we want to call a spade a spade, just take a look at the NBA standings and the New York Knicks lost 14 more games than the Boston Celtics here. And if you want to put every NBA athlete under true serum, put them on the lie detector test and say, would you rather play the Celtics or the Knicks? 100 out of 100 are saying the New York Knicks, but that does not mean that you should handle things like this. Now for Paul Reed specifically, I think the Sixers just need to step in and say, that is enough press for B-Ball Paul. The B-Ball Paul victory tour can go on behind the scenes. It does not need to occur in front of the media. This is a guy who I like having on the Sixers team and has played well overall this season. Now, there was a big deal regarding his contract. And by the way, I'm going to touch more on that in a minute. But he has played within his role. After a bit of a slow start to the season, what was disappointing this year from Paul Reed was that he was not capable of elevating into kind of a starting caliber center in the absence of Joel Embiid. But what he can do is be that instant energy off the bench. Be a guy that changes the game with his impact, his energy, his ability to rebound, his ability to just uptick the tempo and really dominate defensively. That There are stretches where he really does control the game. Now, I did mention the contract. He did have another funny quote on the same interview here. So, of course, the context leading up to this being that Paul was a restricted free agent last year in the offseason. It was the Utah Jazz that extended the contract offer, and it looked like for a period of time that the Sixers were not going to match it. It's about $8 million per year, and the quote that people Paul had when asked how happy he was when the Sixers did ultimately match that, people Paul said he was happy that Philadelphia matched his offer sheet from Utah. Quote, I was super hyped. Ain't nothing in Utah for real. And again, not telling a lie here, but maybe not the most media savvy way to answer that question. But there is a notable clause in his contract that comes into play during this very series. That to pull it up exactly here, one of the terms of the offer sheet provided a unique twist on Reed's contract. The first season of the contract is fully guaranteed, that being this year, but the next two seasons, worth $15.7 million, become guaranteed if the Sixers advance to the Eastern Conference semifinals, sources said. Given where the two franchises stand, it was more likely the Sixers would have those have to guarantee those 24, 25, and 25, 26 seasons than the Jazz. So this was a little bit of a chess move from the Utah front office, from Danny Ainge over there, kind of twisting, putting a clause in that saying, for the Sixers to sign this deal, you're essentially making it a three-year guarantee. Now, I will say the odds of the Sixers getting past the first round are probably lower right now than we were anticipating going into the year. Now, think back if this is a healthy Joel Embiid year. There's no way that they're scrapping out of the seven seed right now. But of course, the situation is the situation. And the bottom line is Paul Reed's playing for a guaranteed contract in this specific series, that if they do win this, that he will be locked up for the next two seasons with $15.7 million guaranteed. And if the Sixers don't win this series, then he's right back where we were last offseason, and he will be an unrestricted free agent this side. So there is a lot on the line for B-Ball Paul specifically. And that's all the more reason why you should not be giving this team any more to build off. And again, 
I don't think there were any ill intentions from Paul Reed. I don't think he stepped on that show saying, I want to disrespect the New York Knicks. I don't believe they can beat us. And to be honest, I think people read into that stuff far too much. I know to make a Philly Philly to Philly reference that a lot of people give him the Garrett Stubbs comparison, who of course is the backup catcher for the Phillies, who mentioned that if they win against the Arizona Diamondbacks last year, that they were making a beeline for the pool out in the outfield. And obviously the Phillies went on to collapse. I don't think that's the same thing in this comparison that for starters, B-Ball Paul is a guy that like once again I don't think it was ill-intended out of his mind and I don't think that quote is that bad in its entirety that he is just calling a spade and spade and being brutally honest so for Paul specifically I would prefer if this is the last time we see his name in headlines let let your on-court play do the talking and I don't think there's going to be too many opportunities for him to have those conversations based on how the playing time will get sliced up but he's still going to be a key role during this run that we've seen for years the Sixers get crushed when the backup center if you want to flash back to the Greg Monroe days or the Amir Johnson days Boban Marjanovic days even more recently with DeAndre Drummond who is probably the best of the bunch but the Dwight Howards the DeAndre Jordans the washed up veterans that have come through at least Paul Reed has a pulse way more than these guys do. He has a skill set that is different than Joel. And when we have the backup center conversation, I've always been a very pro Paul Reed guy for that reason. That you're, there's always going to be a significant drop off when you go from Joel Embiid to the backup center. And the reason that backup center is more important for the Sixers team is if you're comparing it to just another team centers typically don't have that large of a role that there's only a handful of centers that are really dependent on their team is really dependent on them being so crucial on both sides of the floor for example if you want to compare them to really any team around the league you can kind of just plug and play them that it's more guard dominated more wing dominated and you kind of can kind of slide guys in and out but when Joel Embiid is the most important player on both sides of the floor that when he steps off there's pretty large shoes to fill and why I've disagreed with the method of having you know these aging veterans is that you're just playing the same style but a guy that can't live up to it when you have a guy like Paul Reed there's a different skill set that he does possess that he is going to switch out on the perimeter he is going to guard guards he is going to play with this athletic pop to run the break get up and down and he does use his athleticism to his advantage and one of the the key pushbacks and arguments and the the criticisms of Paul Reed so far has been foul issues frankly I don't care about that whatsoever that for the people saying that the best case scenario for Paul Reed entering a game when Joel Embiid is healthy is he's playing 12 minutes in that game if you want to use all six fouls in 12 minutes be my guest man now again this is a different story and one of the reasons why it's limiting why he hasn't taken that expanded role into being able to share the floor with Joel Embiid or be more than just a backup center and in the long term I still would like to see him take those strides I also think it is noteworthy that Nick Nurse is now the second coach to really keep him on a tight leash that we were so critical of Doc River for not letting the b-ball Paul victory tour rain on but now we're seeing Nick Nurse essentially handle him the same way that even during the Joel Joel Embiid list period it was Mo Bamba being the primary starter and Paul Reed still playing within his role now I do think it's valuable to be a master within your role rather than having to expand things there's give and take to both arguments there the bottom line is Paul Reed is still a guy that is going to play playoff minutes. He's still a guy that is going to come into play against this Knicks team. And there are matchups that I like him in. A guy like Precious Achua, I think is a perfect matchup for Paul Reed. And frankly, it's going to be a fun battle between those two when those opportunities do occur. And bottom line is the Knicks are a pretty good rebounding team with Mitchell Robinson, who's terrific on the glass. Isaiah Hartenstein, who's had a phenomenal year. That he, Paul Reed is going to have to play his best and win those minutes. And you better believe that these Knicks players have seen that quote as well because it is is flying around everywhere. So once again, I don't think it is as ill-intended by Paul Reed as it came out. I do hope that this is the last time he has any sort of quote like this. And once again, from the Sixers perspective, there should be a phone call directly to him saying no more national podcasts. Don't hop on live TV anytime until this playoff run is, is over. But it is just part of the charm that B-Ball Paul brings. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Are you fired up at it? Are you mad at the guy Paul Reed for letting it rip like that? Or do you think it's just, you know, it is what it is. The bottom line is everyone's leaving it on the line anyway. If you th- if it took this quote to motivate a team to play in the playoffs, then there's something wrong right there. So I, I don't have, I'm not that upset or think there's that many concerns with it, but definitely not an ideal situation. Regardless, thank you to all you guys for tuning in this video. Make sure you're smashing the subscribe button, dropping a like, and I'll be talking with you next time right here on Sixers Digest. Peace.